Welcome to Beyond the Shelf. I'm Dawn. And I'm Jenny. We are We're hungry. not excited. We're not excited. <laughs> We're hungry today. We are, are sitting here with our friend Corey, who coordinates the library's cookbook club, which is another one of the fun, cool other things that happens at the library. Yes, it is. And I am, I am excited, though, because I actually cooked something I hate to cook. This this whole <laughs> podcast was my idea, but so, so we picked a recipe from our cookbook club for the month of August, which is the Pioneer Woman Cooks. Reed Drummond is the author of this book. She's written a lot of things, cookbooks and other books, but this is the cookbook that they're doing. The Pioneer Woman Cooks. Oh, it's called Dinner's Ready. One hundred. And 12 fast and fabulous recipes. Does your the recipe you made feel fabulous? I probably would have been if I wasn't the one making it. But are you a slightly impatient home cook? <laughs> Which is also part of the subtitle. Yeah. yeah, I hate cooking. So I guess that slightly is, is under <laughs> underselling it, my impatience. So you were saying, what did you make from this cookbook? So I made meatballs. Mm-hmm. They are sausage and pork-based meatball. And... I put my own little twist on them, and I made them carbon-coated meatballs. And if you're not like understanding what that means. Charbroiled. Charbroiled. They're Cajun-style, blackened meatballs. So, Your own little twist on the recipe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, before we dive into I made what was described as an easy Tex-Mex chicken and rice dish, I guess. Mm-hmm. Before we dive into that, let's talk to Corey a little bit. Hi, Corey. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Do you know how long Cookbook Club has been meeting here? Yes. We, uh, at least according to my notes, maybe it was occasional before this, but we started regularly in 2013. You know, give or take take without COVID around 10 years to 11 years. (laughs) Has the group grown or like fluctuated in numbers in that 10 years or so? Is it pretty constant? It's been about about the same. It, mm-hmm. it varies every month mm-hmm. or every time we, we have it. So probably anywhere between 8 and – or we occasionally we get 6, but usually it's around 8 to 12 or 13, mm-hmm. sometimes as many as 15. Are you the brainchild of the cookbook club? No, no. I did not come up with the original idea. It was done by a couple different people in the reference department. Maybe even a director did it. I'm not sure who started it. Okay. But I've been doing it for a long time, so. Mm-hmm. And do you enjoy cooking, Corey? I would say usually. Yeah. And uh, if there's a lot going on, not so much. So <laughs> a fair weather cook? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I'm not stressed, uh, what's the subtitle here? Slightly, slightly impatient. impatient. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I'm slightly impatient to cook, but yeah. Most of the time I enjoy cooking. If you are a fair weather, slightly impatient cook, you get to pick the the cookbooks for Cookbook Club. I do. So how do you pick the books? I would say I look at different factors. So before the year starts, I try to figure out what the cookbooks are going to be for the next year. I take recommendations from my faithful attendees. (laughs) Sometimes they request more international cooking. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they request more local cooking. Sometimes they want to do a cooking magazine. Occasionally we'll just have a random one that's bring your family favorite recipe. It's not even from a cookbook. But oftentimes I am, I'm looking at reviews, what's coming out, um, what I should correct that. It's not really what's coming out because if it's coming out right now, it's not going to be available for a number of people. So mm-hmm. I tend to look at cookbooks that are a year or two old. But we're popular. But we're popular. Mm-hmm. Okay. So all those things. Do you ever regret when you come up to a month and you're like, why did I pick this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely have had that feeling a few times. Yeah. Kind of like me. Why did I want to do this podcast? Because I had to cook. <laughs> what in the world? I'm happy to interview you, Corey. Please don't take any offense to my not liking cooking because I like you. I just don't like to cook. <laughs> well, that's that's very nice. Okay. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Okay, good. I don't expect everyone in the world to like cooking, and I don't always yeah. feel like cooking either. So, Good. Well, I know that in the past you've done, you did like an air fryer. Like when that became real yes. popular, people brought in their air fryers with stuff. Yes. Have you used other appliances that you've kind of focused on at all? 
We did an Instant Pot, mm-hmm. but that wasn't really Cookbook Club. It was actually just a different program. Oh, it maybe that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Instapot, not Air Fryer. Yes, that's the one and we've did. talked about doing Air Fryer, yeah. and then we just never quite got around to doing it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not enough of us have Air Fryers, or, there, or we have different ones, and so we, we never did get around to that. Okay. But we did an Instapot class. That brought in quite a few, it didn't did. it? It did, yeah. And thought. people requested more, and then we just... Haven't done it again. Haven't done it again. It's busy. It's it's kind of complicated to to do. So, well, to bring it in, yeah, instead Mm -hmm. of just like a casserole dish or whatever. And you have to bring the ingredients and anyway, it's a little more complicated. Sure. So, we have a pretty extensive cookbook collection here. Do you have any input on what is ordered for that at all? Uh, Not really. Mm -hmm. However, I I do believe if if I request something, then it probably mm-hmm. will show up, especially if it's something that we are going to do a cookbook club on and we don't mm-hmm. have it. Like if it's available in other libraries, but we don't have that one yet, um, it, it'll tend to get purchased. Okay. So I guess a, a little bit. A little bit. But I'll not a lot. In there. So I know that most of your cookbooks probably have over 100 recipes. Did you ever show up and all of a sudden there's seven people pick the exact same recipe out of 100? <laughs> it's a good question. We have had, I think... The most we've had is maybe three people doing the same recipe. That's still a lot, I think, from a small group. It is quite a lot. But we also have, at least the the people who are attending now, a lot of them will make more than one recipe. So even if there are repetitions, there are still plenty of food. I did actually make another thing out of this cookbook, too. She has, like, some... I don't know if it was – it wasn't a side. It was some other little thing, but it was pickled onions was the recipe, which was literally water, vinegar, sugar, sugar. and salt, mm-hmm. and red onions, and that was it. And I made the mistake of just trying to, to eat the onion by itself, and I was like, this is really vinegary <laughs> after, you know, it had, like, sat in the fridge for a day or so. But I found with the salad it was really good, mm-hmm. but just making, like – did it taste better after a couple of days? It did, after yeah. a day or so. Because I think, like, just overnight was not enough time Didn't for him to really enough. pickle mm-hmm. that well. But it's like the red onions turn into a very vibrant pink. They were pretty. I saw them. <laughs> they were. They were very vibrant pink. So one thing that I do when I am, I'm going to air quote follow a recipe, because I don't follow recipes to a T. Do you guys do that like if it says like exactly <laughs> this ingredient or this much of something do you follow that or do you modify as you go well if i'm baking mm-hmm. i try to do it because baking is is pretty much a science mm-hmm. with flour and yeast and everything you have to have pretty much what it says mm-hmm. but if i'm just cooking whatever no i don't like for these these meatballs i followed the recipe like i used the ingredients I didn't necessarily measure out exactly Mm -hmm. two teaspoons or a quarter cup or whatever. Okay. And, like, it was supposed to use grated mozzarella cheese, and I just shredded cheese instead and then kind of cut it up with a Mm -hmm. fork. I'm fancy like that. So (laughs) that's how we grate things around these parts. Yep. It was great. So... (laughs) I think that's essentially the same thing, Mm -hmm. but probably a better quality. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I laugh every time we come to Cookbook Club because we share food, everybody brings a dish or two from the book cookbook, and then we eat it kind of potluck style. Mm -hmm. And then we sit down after people are kind of finishing up their food, and we take turns saying what we made and how closely closely we cooked, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. followed the directions and used the same ingredients. So it's not just me. No, no. Even my husband, he heard that. It's not just me. I (laughs) mean, oh no. In theory, we're supposed to be doing these exactly so that we're truly testing the cookbooks. But just about everybody improvises a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, And I laugh every time because every time I change something. Uh And I'm like, I'm a bad example here. (laughs) I notoriously in my house get the question of, did you follow a recipe? Like, with that intonation. And yeah. I'm like, Do you hate it? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Eh, mostly. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I feel like you have these women mostly. I don't know if you have any men that we, come. We do. We have a okay. couple men who are coming now. So these men and women that come, mm-hmm. I feel like they come to the cookbook club because they enjoy cooking. Mm-hmm. And people that enjoy cooking are probably great improvisers. Yes. And they put their own little flair or mm-hmm. extra mm-hmm. zhuzh in it. Mm-hmm. And so it makes sense that they don't 
do the structured step right. by step. Mm-hmm. I personally, when it comes to cooking, am more like if it has more than five ingredients, I'm not interested. If it has more oh, than five no. steps, I'm not interested. I, Most um, of these cookbooks have oh recipes. So no. no, usually you can find a recipe in the cookbook that is that simple, but a lot right. of them have a lot of complicated recipes. The recipe for this <clears throat> Tex-Mex dish. I took pictures of the recipes so that I didn't have to keep the book so it could go on to the next person. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I went to make this that I did not take a picture of both pages that the recipe was on and had to come back in and (laughs) grab one and flip over and get the second page because I was like, oh, I don't have like everything else. Oh, (laughs) like I had all the ingredients, but I didn't have all the other steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this yeah. book, I liked that there were, like, pictures for every step. Mm-hmm. I, yes. A lot of recipes don't do that. Yeah. No, I'm a, I am a fan of, of picture books, of picture cookbooks, <laughs> for sure. Uh, although, it's kind of like when you go to the hairdresser and you show her what you want and it and your doesn't, hair doesn't look like that. Mm-hmm. My food never looks I like sent that. you a picture of it what really this good. looked like. Yeah. But it doesn't exactly look like the picture, for sure. Well, Dawn did it bang up job mm-hmm. i haven't mm-hmm. tasted it yet but i'm going to soon and it looks really good you look like you did a good job thank you you're welcome i had to use my big skillet wow <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow the recipe that i made though i didn't say the name of it italian oven meatballs that's what the recipe is I made. the oven italian i hope so <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. That's why they got burnt. Yeah. I used a French oven duck on it. That's the problem. So my ingredients are ground pork, Italian sausage, mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese, pesto, balsamic glaze, and red pepper flakes and salt and pepper. That's what's in the meatballs. They're actually very flavorful. They're a little dry because of the carbon crust. But um, <laughs> I I will try this recipe again. But... I will not cook it as long as I did. My house was full of smoke. I almost took a picture. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking you would not have made this recipe because there are definitely more than five ingredients here. Yeah. You were listing everything off. So if I don't count spices, mm-hmm. chicken, onion, garlic. I, is garlic a spice? Did you have to chop yeah. it? No, because I buy it minced. <laughs> then if it's powdered i i don't know powdered garlic is a spice yeah regular garlic is an herb you're the expert here Corey. what oh, do you yeah. think Corey? I, i'm not an expert on <laughs> defining what garlic, garlic <laughs> categorizing garlic it's a flavoring but it also i don't know yeah i don't know so chicken onion a can of tomato sauce a can of rotel and then rice and two kinds of cheese so was it minute rice or did you cook rice in a rice cooker? So it actually called for microwavable ri- white rice, but I do not own that and did hmm. not get that when I went to the store. So I actually made rice and then mm-hmm. put it into this. We I have a rice cooker too mm-hmm. at home. That's mm-hmm. what I use when I make rice. Birth. So have you, besides Jenny's foray into charbroiled meatballs, have you had any like bad results from your recipes? At the, for the cookbook club, not uh-huh. just at home. In oh. Not just in general. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. Some mm-hmm. have been kind of okay, mm-hmm. you know, but not – I haven't I haven't really wrecked a recipe to the point where I'd throw it out and, and not bring okay. it. Has anybody brought something and everybody went, oh. No. no. Yeah, we, we have a few people who, who are, would have been mm-hmm. embarrassed to bring their recipe and they mm. started over. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I have no shame. Go ahead. I want you guys to try these meatballs. Oh, let's dig into okay. these burnt meatballs. Let's try them. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's do it. Oh, that's a lovely dark color. They yeah. actually don't look totally burned, only like partly. Well, I put the unburnt side up for you to see. <laughs> the br- uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, the other little, side's a little bit. It's a little burnt. carbon carbonated. Yeah, it's <laughs> carbon crusted. See the inside. The inside that's, looks lovely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's kind. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like I'm, I'm breaking gonna, open an egg. You just. I'm you just gonna have you nibble on it here. Jump in there. Mm. I think mm, they're pre- taste really good. Not well, bad. I thought they tasted mm-hmm. pretty good. I was happy For with a French oven. They taste very yeah. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. Mm-mm. No, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. So, like I said, I will probably make mm. these again, mm-hmm. and they were Definitely. easy to mix together and throw together. Or I would, I would maybe even make this into a meatloaf instead mm-hmm. of you know Ooh, doing like individual balls. Oh, yeah. yeah, that'd be great. So I just will try not to make it so Cajun style next time. 
So Which is really not too bad. Of course, I haven't eaten the blackest part. But. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband bit into it, and he went, oh, kind of more of a kick than I was expecting. And that was the red, the red mm. pepper flakes that are in it. Mm-hmm. I think it called for <laughs> half a teaspoon. <laughs> I might have done a little bit more because I like things a little more spicy. Those so, are good. We like spicy in our house, mm-hmm. so yeah, they're great. Good. They're really good. I think I'm going to be doing these. Well, good. I'm glad you liked them. Mm-hmm. Good job. Thanks. Well done. I appreciate that. They are well done. You're right. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> so well done. Have there been any recipes that everybody's like, oh, I like this. This is really good. Oh, so many. Mm-hmm. So, so many. Yeah. I think this last time, what was the last one we did? <laughs> the Cool Kitchen Cookbook was last month's. And oh, it's by yeah. Taste of Home. And it had a lot of kitchen, cool kitchen kind of recipes. What and does it mean there by was, cool? Like not heating what, up the oven? Not use, it basically was not using the mm-hmm. oven. So mm-hmm. there were some stovetop things. They did have some Instapot recipes and some air fryer recipes and grilling recipes. But a lot of them were just, cho- you know, salads mm-hmm. or cook pasta and different, different kinds of pasta salads or, mm-hmm. you know. Cooler kitchen. Mm-hmm. That's the thing in the <laughs> summer. You don't want to turn your oven on. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so mm-hmm. the oven is what really heats our mm-hmm. kitchen. So anyway, it was a, I, I just felt like every single recipe people brought, made and brought in was really good. was really on. good. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, this is so good. Especially so, with the hot weather that yes. we had recently. Those are probably perfect. Yes. Now, in contrast, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the one before, which is the one I missed because I was on vacation, <laughs> was the Mediterranean dish, and it was Mediterranean recipes. And I think what I heard from a few people was the the review I heard from, from other people was that what they ate, what people brought to Cookbook Club was really tasty and good, but only six people came <laughs> And uh, were they intimidated? I by think the they book? were intimidated, and it was also a lot of ingredients mm-hmm. that were hard to find. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Um, that's a big one. For unfortunately, me, for sure. so it, I did. Like, I took a lot of time trying to figure out some of the international cookbooks that were sort of Americanized, mm-hmm. so that it was a little bit easier. But this one maybe was a little bit too genuinely Mediterranean. Yeah. <laughs> I had a recipe recently, and I can't even remember where I got it from, but it called for za'atar, mm-hmm. which is a spice blend mm-hmm. that has like sumac in it mm-hmm. and some other things. And I really didn't think I'd be able to find it, but just by chance, at like Meyer, mm-hmm. they had it, and there it was go. more expensive than like every other spice. But did and you it, like that spice? I did. Yeah, it was okay. an interesting blend. The thing that we decided after we, whatever it was, I made with that was that it needed garlic. Mm. It didn't mm. have garlic in it. I hate when I buy spice for an, a recipe and then mm. I hate the spice and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Now a $12 jar of spice yeah. they throw away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very frustrating. And to after me. doing a series of international cookbooks, we have, haven't done it every month, but it's kind of like all, up roughly every other month. Mm-hmm. A lot of us have gotten you know, spices or different kinds of blends that we would not, not, not normally use. And so we've, we've thought maybe we should come up with some sort of a place where we could just like, I'll buy this spice and you buy that spice and we'll put it somewhere central where yeah. <laughs> everyone can come and maybe get we some. we need a spice exchange. Yeah, yeah. a spice exchange. Uh-huh. That'd be perfect. So to go with her. You said that you have occasionally done like a potluck where people just bring in like family recipes. Yeah, we have. Uh, okay. Maybe or, just a couple times. But. Okay. Because I was wondering, have you guys thought about making your own cookbook based on those recipes? Mm. I don't think that's ever been suggested. Well, there you go. Hey, <laughs> got a new idea. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I just thought I can maybe. Ask. Yeah. So, Dawn, I think we should dive into your dish. Okay. So I feel like I should warn you, this was spicy for me. I don't eat mm. a lot of spicy things anymore. I used to, but my body hates it now. And this has cayenne pepper in it. And mm. it's like... A half a teaspoon maybe but it was my husband who eats spicy things said i wouldn't want anything hotter than this okay so that's my warning to you well rotel tomatoes are spicy too because you got the ones with green chilies right, right? yeah those yeah. are usually pretty spicy i had no idea because i don't yeah. buy a diced tomato yeah so okay. i mean yeah so that's probably so there's added to the it. in the book re drummond says that this originally started out as just like a spanish rice side dish and then she added chicken to it mm. but it's got pepper jack cheese on top rattel and 
Lots of taste. Dig right. in. I'm going to try it. it. Go for it. Okay. Best of luck to you. <laughs> I'm going to try it too. I this was my dinner last night, so. Ooh, it's cheesy. That's really good. Is I that, like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, that's really good. You mm. know how when something like sits in the fridge, it gets like spicy or like the, the spices like infuse mm-hmm. more. I'm assuming it's going to be hotter now. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. I don't consider that overly spicy, but I can see how I can just feel the heat on the back of my throat a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. But since I like spice, mm-hmm. it would not bother me. Nope. Someone like my mom would probably like the flavor, but it would mm-hmm. probably upset too her much. stomach. Yeah. My conclusion when I had this for dinner last night was a dollop of sour cream would really go oh, over Oh, yes. That. Cool it down for a little. sure, yeah. This but I like be, it. I think it would be good with like nacho chips too. Mm-hmm. Oh, good point. Like, yeah. If you wanted to. I mean, it's rice. I guess you don't need more carbs, but I could see it almost like a, mm-hmm. a nacho sort of thing. kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or rolled in a wrap. It'd be good rolled in a wrap. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, the recipe calls for putting um, queso fresco on it, like crumbled queso fresco mm-hmm. and um, cilantro for garnish. Do you like cilantro? I love cilantro. Oh, me too. It's one of I my favorites. Yeah. I know there are some poor individuals out there that have Taste that weird dish, genetic so, thing yes. and cilantro tastes bad. And I, I'm yeah. so sorry for those people. I have a daughter that loves it and a daughter that it, it tastes like dish soap. She cannot stand it. You have yeah. the dish soap gene. I, I, <laughs> not me, apparently, because I love it. And my other daughter loves it. So that must come from her dad, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Unless it's a recessive thing or something. I would definitely say this recipe was super easy because it was like cook the chicken and then you mm-hmm. throw in like the onion and... And it was canned it, mm, tomatoes. Dumb, like you had to yeah. chop tomatoes or anything. And if you do have the micro microwavable rice that it calls for, it's Maybe. a one pot dish, mm-hmm. which I know a lot of people love. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That was good. So you will make this again, you think? Probably will you would. Cut yeah. the cayenne out? I will probably do like half as much as it calls for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make it a little less spicy just for my own safety. So you followed the recipe in, when you did it as far as how um, much? Hot pepper. I did. I followed us for how much spice, uh, how much of each spice it called for. The the only things that I changed was again I used shredded cheese instead of a grated Mm -hmm. pepper jack. I think it called for grated. I don't remember. I wonder. She's from Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe grated and shredded are interchangeable in Texas. Oh. Who knows? I don't know. I made that up. Are you from Texas? Let us know. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> you Texans out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's really good. Mm-hmm. And I no, I appreciate that. And I'm glad I did it, even though I know I'm saying I don't like to cook. And it, it, this did not turn me around to be like, oh, I'm going to cook three meals a day. No, that's not going to happen. But <laughs> I will make this again. Yeah. It was good. I did. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I like my meatballs. Well, it's pork. You don't want it to be raw. <laughs> No, no chance here. <laughs> no chance. Uh, the one thing in my recipe, it was like a pound of Italian sausage casings removed. I just bought a pound of Italian sausage that was already ground. Right. Mm-hmm. I did not mm-hmm. buy the the one with the, the actual casings. individual sausage. Where I had to mm-hmm. do that. I'm like, well, that's dumb when mm-hmm. it's available <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> so, so as the person that does the cookbook club, mm-hmm. did you? volunteer or were you voluntold when the time came to take it I over? I think I think the question was asked who would want to do this and I said, Well, I think that sounds fun. Okay, good. And no I one mean... else said, I want to do it too. And we didn't have it we didn't have to duke it out. So Yeah. So you're so just I, gonna be our gonna keep doing it. I guess huh? so. And then the other thing, in case you didn't know, is we are gonna start a family cookbook club for kids and oh, their parents awesome. or other caregivers. I think that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Now, will that be like earlier in the day or will that still be in the evening? It's going to be evening okay. because the the age group we're looking for is sort of third to sixth graders. So okay. it's, it needs to be at least after school. Okay. Mm-hmm. First one is going to be September 19th at six o'clock. What day of the week is that? It's a Thursday and I do not okay. work Thursday evening. So I'm just going to have to come in special for that one. Oh, they get a <laughs> special time with Corey. Special time with Corey. <laughs> So when everybody brings all of this, the hodgepodge of stuff, does everyone take their leftovers home or do people share it? Like, oh, I like that rice. It goes good with my meatballs or whatever. Right. And do they like take half and half together or kind of mix it up? I would say a lot of people, some people just take their dish home if they've got, if they know their family will eat it. And Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few of them say, anybody want this? And we do have some takeout containers now that people can fill if they want. Good idea. That's great. Yeah. Well, I know that when you've done desserts before Mm -hmm. that you've brought them upstairs to us. Yeah. And we've got to benefit from that throughout the week. I know when I used to work Monday nights and cookbook club would be down here and I'd be like sitting up there and I'm like, 
Oh my goodness. It, this just, it smelled so good. They'd be bringing in their containers and I was like, I'll get out of here till eight o'clock and they're down there feasting like kings. Corey's but, getting yeah. paid to feast. Yes. <laughs> not, not fair. But yeah, I'm glad that it's so successful and hopefully, you know, people will keep trying to come and doing it. So the children's one, is that going to just like run through the school year? Well, we are going to try two times and okay. see what kind of reception we get, how many people are interested. Because we don't really know. We've had people say, would you do yeah. that for kids? Can the kids come? And we, it's really supposed to be our traditional cookbook club program supposed to be for an, – it's an adult program. Mm-hmm. So we have allowed some kids to come. And there has been a, a young man who's been coming mm-hmm. to ours lately. But – we thought maybe this family cookbook club would be a better option for that age group to, mm-hmm. to learn to cook and to have an activity with their family. Yes. Okay. Yes. September 19th and October 17th are, okay. are two that we have lined up. Mm-hmm. And then if those go, go well, then we'll, we'll figure out if we're going to do it once a month or once every other month or whatever for the next year. So Dawn, our, our teen <clears throat> librarian on mm-hmm. staff, you're going to start a teen cookbook club? Hmm. If there was interest for it, I have found that doing anything with food seems to draw the teens to mm-hmm. the library. They like to eat it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they like to make it. Sure. But it it could be a thing, something mm-hmm. that would be simple, like, you know, microwave recipes even. So this month, again, is Pioneer Woman Cooks Dinners Ready, Reed Drummond. Mm-hmm. When is it? August 5th? The August one is at the end of the month. Our, yeah, August 26th. Yes. Because oh. normally we do the first Monday right. of the month, unless there's a holiday or something that bumps okay. it. But the beginning of school kind of getting in the way of a lot of people in August, and then with the fair in the beginning of September, we're kind of trying to squeeze one right before the fair, and then we're skipping September, and we're going to do October. Okay. So, so August 26th. August 26th is this next one. Oh, great. Which is, so then that'll give people plenty of time after they listen to our podcast if they mm-hmm. want to join in. And as a person that doesn't cook, <clears throat> I highly recommend giving it a try. It wasn't wasn't so bad other than, you know, my own failed. Because I, I well, failed. <laughs> you followed it, the recipe. It was just it's true. carbon crusted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Dawn, you recommend it for people to give it a shot? Yeah, I liked the variety in this cookbook. It's 112 recipes, so she has a lot of variety, a mm-hmm. lot of options. And like, I don't eat beef, but there was stuff with pork that you made. Mm-hmm. There was stuff with chicken. There's all kinds of stuff. So this was definitely a good cookbook. And there's a section that's, that's I think, mostly meat-free or something. Yeah, too. I think so too, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't, was there a dessert section? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, but there mm-hmm. wasn't a drink Section. No, I don't mm-hmm. think there was in this one. Because I was talking to Virginia that works here, and I was telling her I had to do this. And she's like, oh, well, just make one of the beverages. And I'm like, Ugh, there's not a beverage in this yes. cookbook. <laughs> and a lot of the cookbooks we've we've chosen, I've chosen for this year, don't have desserts. Oh. So this one actually does. Mm-hmm. And the last one we had had drinks and desserts, and mm-hmm. we had well, cool. quite a few of both. Is it later this year that you're doing baking yesteryear? That's the last one. That's December. That one is like... So many desserts. That is a fantastic cookbook. We'll basically be eating desserts that evening. Mm -hmm. Well, Corey, thanks for joining us today. Do you have any other words of wisdom about your cookbook club you'd like to share? She's (laughs) she's thinking. I don't think there was anything that I was dying to say. All right. Well, thank you. And I hope that, uh, you know, some of our listeners that hadn't tried the cookbook club will get adventurous and give it a try. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Don. what do we have coming up in September? Or, or August? How about August? First, I don't know. It's August. Well, let's take a look here. Ready, set, kindergarten. Can we do this later? We can. Okay. <laughs> I've got ready, set, kindergarten on my phone. I was just going to look at the library calendar and go for well, it. Well, go. You do it. August 5th. There are two sessions. It's from at 1030 and the second one is at 630. This is a kindergarten like getting ready program. They get to come in and they do like a little story and a little craft. That's all school related for incoming kindergartners. And there is a registration for that that begins on July 22nd. So it will it will be open when you are listening to this. We have an author visit 
on August 8th. Mindy yes, McGinnis excited. is coming. Mm-hmm. We're pumped about that. 5 p.m. Her newest book is Under This Red Rock, but we have a bunch of her books. You can come and find one that looks interesting and read. If you want to get a little bit about what Mindy's about, you can go back to our interview episode with her. We talked to her a while back. Was it last year sometime early? I want to say like April or May of last Mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's very open. So if you come, any of her books that you've read, you know, she'll be happy to talk to you about any of them. Mm -hmm. Corey, are you involved with the amazing monarchs that are going to be in the children's department? Not really. No. No, that is the other dawn. That's the other dawn. (laughs) So we usually, and in the past, we've had like a monarch habitat. Mm -hmm. And so anybody can come up and they can see like them in whatever stage they're in. So sometimes it'll be caterpillars and Mm -hmm. then you get to see the cocoons and watch them hatch and everything. We'll have a second author visit on August 22nd. And that is Brandon Weiss. His book, This Is Gonna Hurt. It's, I guess, about some of his hiking. He's done a lot of hiking on the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide. So 4 p.m. on Thursday, August 22nd, we'll have a second author here in August. So August is all about authors. Because it starts with A. Because it starts with A and amazing monarchs. (laughs) Yep. That's exactly what's going on. (laughs) And then, of course, Cookbook Club on the 26th at 6 p.m. It's A Cookbook Club. I just, come on, go stay on theme. A. I'm like, did I say it wrong? The A Cookbook Club. Sorry. My apologies. The last thing that we have coming up in August is fall trendy titles. Autumn. We'll call them autumn trendy titles. Oh, my word. (laughs) Sorry. On the 29th, which is a Thursday, from 3 to 4 p.m., Marsha is going to be sharing some upcoming uh, new books, a variety of of fiction, nonfiction, all kinds of stuff. You're going to read that whole list that she has, right? She has not even given me a list. Oh, okay. So, of course, you can always go to our calendar on our website to find these events and more, and maybe in a more organized fashion than you heard it today. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we will see you guys at the library. <laughs> <laughs>